Hi there, I have released a new version of my GPT Autopilot or I will release it after this video if it works. It's still in my develop branch and I have made quite a few improvements to it. At least I hope they are improvements. So let's get right into this. So I will run GPT Autopilot and I will add the versions flag to hedge my bets. So we will make three versions of this prompt and I will also say model 3 to use the GPT 3.5 model because that works pretty well actually for this. So let's do that. Now it asked me what would you like to do? So I will say create a snake game in Python and that's it. Now this is a new thing. It will ask me do you want me to automatically detect a custom system message? So I have created here in the project folder a prompts folder which has a few different prompts right now. So for example we have a python flask folder here and we have a system message and a checklist.json and we have an example here. This is not in the github repository. It's just an example for me. Perhaps I will post it in the repository as well. But what this does is I can select a specific system message for GPT Autopilot depending on what kind of project I'm working on. So for example if I select the Python flask then in the system message we have all kinds of prompts for a flask application. So for example here we have the basic starting file structure so that it will start with the same structure every time. And just some reminders to use specific URIs for the styles and the scripts and then all these kind of make sure prompts here. But this is actually not enough. It still makes mistakes. So then I have created this checklist.json which is a bunch of prompts to ChatGPT to check after it finishes the project to check that these have been done. So if I want I can select one of these prompts and then it will use the system message from here and the checklist. And of course you can create your own prompts here. And in fact if you create a prompt that works for a specific technology or project type then do send me a pull request on my github repository then I can include it there and other people can use it as well. Or if you can make mine better. I'm not sure how good these are. I've just tested these out with a couple of projects and they work pretty well. But in this case when we are creating a snake game I don't have a specific prompt for games or a snake game so I will just say no. I don't want to detect automatic. Now if I say yes then it will check all the folders in the prompt folder and then pick based on our prompt which one would fit that. But we will say no. And then it will ask me do you want me to make your prompt better? Now this was already in the previous version but I have made it better. So if I say yes because my prompt is kind of bad just create a snake game. So I'll say yes. And now it will create a better prompt from this prompt. So it will say you are tasked with creating a snake game in Python. The game should allow the player to control the snake on a grid and eat food to grow longer and so on. Now this is actually a pretty good prompt but if it wasn't a good prompt if I wanted to change something then I can say no and now it will ask what do you want to modify. So let's say I wanted to use a specific library to do this. So I can say uh, modify it to use the pi game library. So then it will make another prompt based on the original prompt and now it added using the pi game library. So you can ask as many times as you want to make new versions of the prompt until you're satisfied and then you can say yes and you can continue. Now next it will ask me five questions about the project before it starts. Now you can change this with the command line arguments which I will show later but by default is five questions. So it will say should the snake wrap around the grid when it reaches the border? I will say yes. Then it will make another question. What should the size of the grid be? Now if you don't want to answer a question if you think it's not a good question you can just press enter and it will skip it and it will not send it to chat GPT at all. So it will not take that into account. Now it's kind of a weird question but I will say make the window 800 by 600 and the grid 20 by 20. So I want to have 20 by 20 pixels of the snake and the food and then I have, want to have an 800 by 600 window. Does that make sense? I think so. Should the grid lines be visible or just the cells? Just the cells. Should the snake move automatically? If it does how fast should it move? It should start moving 
when the arrow keys are pressed the first time. Now, how fast should it move? How do you answer that question? <laughs> Kilometers per hour? <laughs> what should be the initial length of the snake? Um, let's say five pieces. <laughs> now, next it will create a task list. Now, this probably would benefit from more questions. So we could use that command line argument to make like 10 or 20 questions. But then it will create this task list. So it will say, okay, create a new Python file called snakegame.py. Import the pygame library in the snakegame.py file. Create a function. And we have all these functions here. And build the game logic and call the main function at the end of the... Now, in the next step, we can select if we want to send the whole task list at once to ChatGPT or go one by one. Now, if we go one by one with this, there's going to be a lot of redundant stuff because when we say create a new Python file called snakegame.py, it will already write the code. And then we say import and create and all this stuff. Then it will just send these messages to ChatGPT and then it just says, oh, I did it, that, I did it already. <laughs> so it's not really necessary here. Now, again, like the original prompt, we can make this better if we want, or we can request modifications. So if I say, no, I don't want to use this, and I can say, make the task list shorter. So then it will make less tasks. Now, it didn't actually do that. So I will say no again and make the task list just five tasks. Okay, now it listened to me and it shortened it. But I'm still not quite happy with what it did. But let's use this anyway. And now it's going to ask me if I want to run all of these at once or step by step. Now I will do once because this is kind of a bad task list. So let's see what it does with this. So we are going to write the snake game dot pi. And now we are making two versions, sorry, three versions of this. So hopefully at least one of them works. So I will come back to you after it's done. Now, <laughs> something very interesting is happening here. <laughs> it is actually creating an images folder and then <laughs> it is using wget to get an image of an apple. <laughs> so let's actually see if that will work. So not found. Okay. Okay. It will try another one. So let's see if that URL works. Okay. So we actually downloaded some <laughs> image of an apple. <laughs> it has never done this before when I've been testing. <laughs> let's see if it actually works. All right, the first version is done and it cost 27 cents. Now, that is quite pricey for GPT 3.5. And I don't want to know how much that would have cost with GPT 4. But I have done this much cheaper. And I will show you the other prompt that does it in like 6 cents. But let's wait for the other versions and then I will check if any of them actually work. All right, we have finished the versions. So let's go take a look if any of them actually work. So let's go to version one, which has the Apple image. Let's actually take a look what is in here. Uh, could not load image. Okay, so that was a failure. So let's take a look and let's Python 3 snake game .py. And look at this, we have a snake game and there's no Apple and game over some t some for some reason when I ate the apple. Let's try again. So if I go here and I eat this apple, game over. Okay, we, we get one point and then game over. Well, not a great start. Let's go back here and let's go to V2 and let's go to snake game and we have a snake game dot pi. So let's run Python 3 snake game dot pi and we have an error. Okay. Let's try the third version and let's run python3 snakegame.py. And here we have a snake and this one also for some reason ends the game when I eat the apple or whatever that ball is. Now, like I said, I have made a prompt that actually works at least sometimes. So let's go and try that out. So if I use my command line arguments, so if I say GPT autopilot and I will say prompt file and I will pass in from tests slash python snake prompt dot text and I will also say system default to not ask for the system message detection 
and I will say not better to not modify the prompt or not ask to make it better. And I will say delete to delete anything that is already in the code folder. And I will say model 3 to use the GPT 3.5 again. And I will say single task list to automatically use just the single task list without doing step by step. And I will also say no questions because I have already questions in my prompt. So if I will show the prompt actually, it is in my tests and I have a Python snake here and a prompt. So here is my prompt. Create a snake game in Python in a single file. Don't implement sound effects. Don't include high score tracking. And then I added some questions and answers here. So these are questions that came from ChatGPT when I entered this prompt, it asked these questions, but now I added them in the prompt already. So now if I run this, it probably won't ask me anything if I didn't forget something. I probably for forgot some command line argument, but let's try to do this. And we are creating a task list and okay, it will ask me, do you want to use this task list? So I should have said dash dash use task list to skip this part. But let's say, yes, I want to use this task list. And then it will send that to ChatGPT and it will write to snakegame.py and hopefully it will work. Okay, and that cost us two cents. So let's see what we get for two cents. So let's go to our code folder and let's run this game. And it does not work. Uh, so let's try one more time. And I'll add that use task list. Now the task list will be different this time. So that's why it doesn't work the same way every time. And of course the GPT API will do different things every time you call it. So it's not very <laughs> trustworthy. But now again we created it in two cents. So let's go take a look. So we should have replaced the old one. So if we say Python 3 snake game .py. then now we have actually a snake game here and let's see if I can eat this thing and yes I am actually growing and it is working so with two cents we can create a very basic snake game with the GPT 3.5 API not even GPT 4 now let's actually try the same prompt with GPT 4 and see if it actually works and let's see <laughs> I can actually change directions so it's not perfect but it kind of works so let's try GPT-4. So I'll answer no and I will change my model to 4. And do the same thing and let's see what happens. Okay, we got 2 cents already from the first prompt from the task list. And now we are at 6 cents. And this is, wait, is it 10 times more expensive or double that? It might be 10 times more expensive to use GPT-4 than GPT-3. Alright, and it is done. And it cost us 24 cents. So yes, it was... 10 times more expensive. So let's see what we have here. We have snakegame.py and let's run python3 snakegame.py and look at... <laughs> okay, that didn't really work. So we have infinite snake. I can turn it sometimes. That's very interesting. So I can turn it sometimes. Um, I can't turn it left. Wait a minute, what is going on here? Okay, that didn't quite work. So for obvious reasons, large language models are not that good with graphical things. So uh, let's try something else. So I believe that in the previous video I did my Python joke app demo, but I had to tell it to change it many times before it worked. But now it should work right away. So I actually have this test here. So I have this prompt. Create a Python Flask website that has a big red button with the text tell a joke and when you press it, it shows a random joke. And then I have a bunch of questions and answers here. So let's see if this one will work. So I might as well run my test. So I have an automated test here, at least half automated. It, it will run it pretty much automatically unless it calls some terminal command that is not allowed. But I have run tests.py here and it runs all the tests from the test folder and it sets all these flags and then some extra flags for every test. So for example, for the Python joke app, we have do checklist, we have max tokens and max price. 
So let me delete my previous results from here and let me run my tests and let's see if they still work. So let's do... Actually, I will change my config first to use the GPT 3.5 because I don't want to go bankrupt. So I will say 3.5 turbo 16K 0613. So that should work. So if I now run tests slash run tests.py, then it should run all the tests. So the first test is in fact JavaScript inventory system. And this test has the following prompt. Create a simple one-page inventory system application in JavaScript for the browser. Ask for a product name, price and quantity and add them to a table. Calculate the total price of the products in the inventory. Add a search function and a delete product button. Style the application with bootstrap from a CDN. Save products to local storage. And I have a bunch of questions here. And let's see when it is done. Okay, I added this question this morning and I forgot to add the flag for skipping this. So I will add step by step. So now we are doing all these tasks step by step. So we create the HTML structure, we add the bootstrap CSS, we create a form to input the product details and a function to add the product table and all this stuff. So if we take a look at our results folder, we should have something here now. Okay, so we have JS inventory system. So let's open this here and Let's go here. So we have an index.html and some JavaScript and some CSS. And let's see if it's done. It's not quite done yet. We are still doing something. Okay, we are now at the last task. Okay, and then we are going to go through the checklist, which in this case, I think is just one. Make sure script tags and link tags have been linked with proper, proper paths. And we are actually writing to index.html, so we are fixing some issue. And we are writing again, so maybe there's another issue. Now it's kind of funny that it's writing two times. Why didn't it do it <laughs> at the same time? Sometimes it behaves weirdly. And now we are writing for the third time. So especially GPT 3.5 sometimes gets into these loops. It just does the same thing over and over. And it's costing me money. Okay, finally it is done. And it cost us 73 cents. So let's go take a look and I will answer this again step by step. And let's go to inventory system. And let's open this in the browser. And it sucks. God damn it. So why does it suck? <laughs> Probably bootstrap is not loaded from the right place. It is. Maybe style CSS is very bad. Okay, how about script.js? Okay, script.js looks pretty good, but we don't have any CSS. Let's test if we can put something in here. It actually adds something in here, and if we refresh, it disappears. So that was a failure. Let's see our Python joke application. Okay, and now we actually want to run Python app.py. But I will not do that, I will do that separately, because it will still continue with the checklist after this. And I will not run this command right now. All right, that is done. Let's take a look at our 61 cent Python joke application. So and I will actually answer again. Well, this one didn't ask me anything. Oh, because that one I ran with the single task list already. So let's see, we have here app.py. So we will say Python app.py and it will say running on localhost 5000. So let's open this and here we have Flask joke app. And if I click tell joke, it will say, why did the chicken go to the seance to talk to the other side? <laughs> and if we click this again, it will say, why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. And we can make another joke, maybe if we click a couple times, because there's just five jokes, so it gets the same one sometimes. Why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have the guts. So this one worked right away from the first prompt. Now it's really multiple prompts because it goes through the checklist and stuff and the task list. But those are automatic. I don't have to put them every time. I just put what I want and then it will do the other stuff automatically. Now let's see what is our next test. So here we are creating a Node.js Stripe payment form. And again, I will do step by step this one. But we did something else in between. So 
we actually did two things. We have a Markdown Live View and we have a Python Snake. So if we go to Markdown Live View and we open this, it doesn't work. Of course, when I make a video, it does not work. So if I say hello, actually it works. It just didn't style this text area here. So these are Markdown Live View editor. So if I write something here and I use Markdown to make like bold text, then it will show it bold and I can add some headings here and I can make like a link to like google.com and it will add it automatically here. And I think I showed this already in the previous version, but let's go then to Python snake again. <laughs> let's see what it did this time. So Python 3, what is it? Snake game.py. And here we have a snake game again and it is working. We can eat the food and we can move around and it is getting longer and it works just like a regular snake game. And let's see what happens if we go there. We come from the other side and if we go here we come from there and then we can eat the food and I do see a flash of my body up there in the top left corner but and I can turn around with the snake apparently but still it's a snake game so that works. Now what do we have next? We are still doing something Okay, we are still doing the Stripe payment form. So let's wait until this finishes and see what that one looks like. All right, now all the tests are done and we should have here Node.js Stripe. So if I open this, we have a server.js, we have a public folder and we have a node module because it actually ran the npm install commands. And I have a command line flag called allow cmd where I can allow a specific command to automatically be ran. So that's why it didn't prompt me for running that command. So if we open this in the terminal and we do node server.js, then we get an error because we did not apparently do something. We didn't install node mailer. So let me do that first. npm install node mailer. And let me run this again. And now we have a server running at port 3000. So if we go to localhost 3000, then here we have a payment form. And look at this. This actually came from Stripe. We have this card number here. Now for some reason I don't see the little icon here. It usually shows that. But like if I refresh this page, you can see it's not there and we are connecting to stripe.com and then it appears. So this actually comes from Stripe. Now I haven't actually tried this with an actual Stripe API key. But if you go to the inspection here and you go to sources, then we are actually connecting to Stripe to get the JavaScript from there. So it's actually using some actual Stripe JavaScript. So if we go to elements and we go to the head or the body or somewhere, here we are adding the js.stripe.com slash v3 as a script on the page. And if we take a look at our sources and our JavaScript somewhere, script.js, then here we actually have your Stripe public key. So we can replace this with our Stripe public key and it should work. And on the server side, if we take a look, so if we go to versions, sorry, it's not in versions, it is in tests and results and node.js Stripe and server, then here we have the actual server and here we are requiring Stripe and we are adding the secret key here. So this probably would work if I put an actual Stripe secret key here and public key on the client side. But as I said, I haven't tried this. And the prompt for this one was this. So if I go to note a Stripe and prompt, this is the prompt. So I'm selling a course, how to get in shape in 30 days. I am planning on selling the course on a website. Please create a website in Node.js for me that has a payment form that I can use to collect the payment of $59.95 USD for my course. The form should include name, email and special requests and it should have a Stripe credit card input directly in the form. <laughs> so this is exactly what we have. So name, email, special request and we have the card number form over here. Okay, now we have this icon here. When I click on the... Okay, it's probably so small that it does some responsive stuff. But if I click here, then we actually have some kind of icon here, which comes from Stripe. Now, another cool thing that I added to this is that now I can run this script from outside of the script folder. So I don't have to be in this GPT autopilot folder to run it. So that means I can do this. I can 
link this file. So I can do pwd for present working directory slash gpt autopilot.py and I will link this into user bin gpt autopilot. And if I do this, then now I should be able to just run gpt autopilot anywhere on my computer. And another thing I added is a dir flag. So this way I can specify what is the working directory for the project. So what this means is that I can go to a WordPress installation that I conveniently have here, and I can say gpt autopilot dir dot. And what will happen is that when I run this, it will send all of these files, the list of files, to GPT Autopilot. And I can say yes to continue working on this project. So it will keep the files in here and then I can modify them. So if I do this and now I say, please create a WordPress plugin in this WordPress installation that adds a short code joke that shows a random joke every time when I put it on the page. And I will not use any custom message and I will not make this better. And it will ask me where should the jokes be retrieved from? Put them in a JSON file. Or let's just say put them, hard code them in the code. Should the jokes be stored in a separate file or directly in the code? Fine, put them in a separate file. Put them in a JSON file. What should be the name of the JSON file? I don't care, so I will skip this one. What should be the... <laughs> okay, so it really wants to know what should be the name of the JSON file. So I'll say jokes.json. Where should be... Where should the jokes.json file be placed? In the plugin directory. What is the name of the WordPress plugin directory? Joke plugin. I want you to create it in the WordPress installation. And now we create a task list. Create the joke plugin directory inside WP content just plugins directory. Create the jokes.json file inside the joke plugin directory. Add the code to the jokes.json file to store the jokes. Create the main plugin file joke plugin.php and so on. Register a short code and so on. So let's continue with this task list and let's do this step by step. And let's see what will happen. So we created a directory WP content plugins joke plugin. And now we are writing to plugins joke plugin jokes.json. And then we are creating the main joke plugin file. And then we are registering the shortcode, which actually didn't do anything because we did that already in the previous step. And we're appending something to the joke plugin for some reason. Now this appending doesn't always work because like you can't really append always to code. It depends <laughs> what the code is. I might remove this appending function because it causes some problems. But now we have created apparently a joke plugin. So if we go to the actual WordPress installation, which I have running here on localhost 3232, and we go to the dashboard and we go to plugins, then look at this. <laughs> we have joke plugin here. Adds a short code joke to display a random joke. Version one by your name. <laughs> so if I activate this plugin, I get an error. So I think it didn't add the starting PHP tag or something. So let's um, say, I think you forgot the starting PHP tag. Okay, it has fixed its problem. So let's go to plugins again and it is activated and we don't have any extra stuff there. So if we go now to the site and we go to sample page and we edit page and we add here, here's a joke for you and we add joke and we update this and we actually go to the page, sample page. And here we have, why did the scarecrow win an award? because it was outstanding in his field. And if we refresh, we get another joke. Why don't skeletons ever fight each other? They don't have the guts. So now you can develop WordPress plugins with GPT Autopilot live in your system. 
Now, of course, this is not recommended if you don't have a backup because it might delete something. So be careful. Now, I might do another video where I actually build some bigger plugin with this to see if it actually works. But this video is getting too long. So I'll do that in a separate video. So if you want to try this out, you can go to unconv slash GPT autopilot in GitHub and you can just clone it here or you can go to the releases, which will have 0.3.0 soon. And then you can go here and if you have Windows, then you can just download the Windows zip file and then just run it and it works. You don't have to install anything, but you can also just clone the whole repository and then run the GPT autopilot file with Python and then just follow the prompts and make sure to give me a star on GitHub if you like this and subscribe to my channel and thanks for a thousand subscribers by the way. And I forgot to mention about the command line arguments. So if we say GPT autopilot help, then it will show all of the <laughs> command line arguments, which there are a lot of, maybe too many. So if you want to know how to skip some of the prompts that it asks, you can check the help. And you can actually put these flags into the config. So if I open config.json.sample, then you can do it this way. So you can add all the arguments that you want to run automatically in this args key in this config.json file. So if you always want to use the default system message and a single task list and no questions, then you can do this. Or you can say questions 10, if you want 10 questions every time or whatever. So let me know in the comments what do you think of this project and give me a like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.